Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be providing a market update on the logarithmic regression curves. So if you enjoyed the content, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. If you're unfamiliar, these logarithmic curves have historically been great accumulation zones. And basically what it does is it fits prior bear market data to help extend out and predict future accumulation zones. Now, one of the drawbacks of this indicator is that it is strictly mathematical and data driven. It is not going to be considering other factors like the macroeconomic conditions, like inflation, and all the other stuff that you hear about today. So that is one of its drawbacks, but it can also be a positive where it just drowns out all the other noise. It really just focuses on the bear market data and doesn't tell you anything else. So I think it's good for using it in confluence with under other indicators and using it as potentially a zone of accumulation as opposed to one specific price point. I do have quite the significant range here, um, but really it's just this midline that is extending out the prior bear markets to predict the future accumulation zones. Now, I think this is a great indicator, again, not for predicting the exact bottom, but predicting where the accumulation zone could be. So when, I, when I'm saying accumulation zone, I'm really talking about these consolidation periods where Bitcoin is really just going sideways within these bands and the overall hype and mania isn't there. It's the smart money that's getting in and investing in Bitcoin. And because this is the time frame that I want to invest in, that's the data that I'm fitting this curve to. So I want to extend out these specific values here and potentially see where we could be seeing a similar scenario. And we're already at this mid curve today. The mid curve is at around twenty two thousand and seven hundred dollars. And historically, the mid curve has been very close to the bear market bottoms, whether we test it here in twenty eighteen or we retest it in March of twenty twenty. You know, it can be a great zone to accumulate when looking at Bitcoin for a multi-year perspective. And I really do think that this is going to be looked back upon as yet another accumulation zone, similar to the prior phases where ultimately we just trend sideways within these bands. And then when Bitcoin is ready for the next bull market leading after into the next halving, again, you know, the cyclical nature, I think eventually we're going to start moving back up to the top of this regression curve and just forming yet another cycle. Now, I think it has to take a while to play out. I think we're going to need to um, obviously spend a very long time accumulating and going sideways within these bands during the boring market conditions. But that is when the accumulation is. That is when you can develop your positions at low entry points when there's not a lot of noise, when there's not a lot of mania and hype. And that is when it's going to be looked back upon as a great zone and opportunity. So also one of the things I want to talk about is how we can use this and take the price difference between certain levels. Now, I'm going to switch over to a different logarithmic curve, but it's still going to be a similar thing, which is taking prior bear market data and helping analyze some, some interesting aspects of Bitcoin. So this logarithmic curve has much more information behind it. It's really just going over each phase into the cycle. And essentially what it does is it takes a fair value best fit of all the data, which is this middle green line. It's a little bit bolded so that we can see, you know, where is Bitcoin trending with its mean value as opposed to um, potentially the extremes. And what we can do is we can take the closing price and, and divide it by this middle line. And what and when you do that, this is the curve. This is the graph you get. Now, I'm showing you this because it does a great job at illustrating the fact that Bitcoin has diminishing volatility. So if we just take a general look at these peaks, you know, Bitcoin is over time getting less and less extended from the from the middle line. Right. We can see how if we go back to 2013 from the peak, we were extended above it by about 700 percent from the 2017 cycle. We were extended by about 270 percent. And then from this prior cycle, we had, you know, an extension of around 150%. So that volatility is diminishing. And that's the point here. We want to see how, how this re reflects into the bear markets. And, and one of the arguments for the bear case is that historically, we've seen 85% declines in the bear markets. You know, we had this 87% decline back in the 2014-2015 bear market. And then in the 2018 bear market, we had an 85% decline. And some of the bears are pointing towards the fact that, you know, we're down a lot, but we're only down 75%. And, and, that, and that's not going to be um, as bad as the prior cycles. And if we were to decline, say, 85%, 
that would take us all the way down to the $10,000 level, which is obviously much lower than, than we are from here. But, but one of the things I'm looking at here is the fact that we have diminishing volatility. So if we're not pumping as hard from, from the middle line here in the prior cycles, why should the bear markets be as significant as the prior ones? Why should the volatility stay to the downside but diminish to the upside? And that's generally my point here. I don't think you can compare the, the percentage declines to the prior cycles because Bitcoin was at a much smaller market cap valuation during these cycles. We could obviously expect an 87% decline if we're pumping 8,500% in 40 weeks, right? If we're going up, again, if we're pumping in 40 weeks 2,000%, then I think an 85% decline is warranted. But if we take the max valuation during this peak, if we just go, you know, 19 weeks out, it was 450%. If we were to take, say, 40 weeks out from the low, you know, really, we were only, we were, we were not extended as far to the upside. So my point is, I don't think we're going to be extended as far to the downside. And this graph just does a great job at illustrating Bitcoin's diminishing volatility. You can see the downside is not getting as steeper as, as potentially the prior bear markets. And really, if we're starting to see a trend here of convergence between this middle curve, I really think that Bitcoin eventually will experience some sort of fair market valuation where, you know, if we're going out decades and decades and Bitcoin really does experience global adoption and really has um, the value being seen in it, then we're going to be seeing the volatility continue to diminish until we reach a point where its fair market valuation is understood and the markets are much more efficient at determining what Bitcoin is actually worth. And we won't see these huge cycles where Bitcoin goes and oscillates around this midline by, you know, extreme valuations. So again, I do think this is converging. I do think in general, the volatility is diminishing and we won't be seeing a, a, an 85% decline. That is my thesis behind this. If you have um, any comments to counterpoint this, feel free to leave those below. I really do appreciate those. I always love to get a different perspective, so if you want to leave a comment below, please do. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.